So I decided to try and sell more of my graphic novels last week. I know that I said I was going to try and sell six books a day, so how exactly was I going to go about that? I decided to make a couple of landing pages, and then I was going to spend $10 in advertising. So my method is this. I'm going to create an ad, one line that explains the book, and then a picture of it. And if people are interested or they want to see more, then they'll click on that and go through. So I won't spend too much time explaining it to them. That's what happens after they click through. So they'll go to the landing page, and the landing page is going to explain more about the book. And I didn't want to spend money on a landing page, and I didn't want to make one by hand. So one of them is going to be a free landing page that I built just using my MailChimp account. And the other one, if you go to sites.google.com and you have a Gmail account, you can actually create a landing page from that. It's a drag and drop interface. It's actually really good. So I'm using that one too, and that's the one that's going to have the more information on it. If you're on my mailing list, I included a link to both of those, but off the top of my head, the Google one is what I'm using at the URL book.americanbandito.com. So you can check that out and see what I'm doing. So far, after, so I had nothing all week, really, as I was testing out different people to put the book in front of. And then kind of towards the end of this week, I was getting two sales a day. If that keeps consistent, then I'm going to raise the money up to $10 a day for the advertising and then see if I actually get more from there. So that's what I'm doing so far. Not six books a day yet, but I'm kind of getting there, testing out some things, seeing what works. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. So this whole time, I'm trying to keep costs low before I find something that works. But imagine that there was a situation where all of these resources were at my disposal, a place that offers tons of creative options, things to use or look at or even help people do their own things. All they had to do was drop in and participate. What would that be like? But as I'm thinking about that, it's really interesting that I met the people that reached out to me today. I'm Steve Baker. My job at the library is head of circulation services. My name is Shauna Kasegi. I work at the adult services department. My title is adult services librarian. They spend their whole day trying to get people to think about a place like that. So how do you get people to come out to a place that to most people has just always been there and always will be in our minds? One of the things that they did is they started a podcast about the library and the people who go there. So tell me about how that show started. It's in its second season now. I started here and then I didn't know anybody. And then Steve was like, are you, are you into podcasts? <laughs> Well, because you were reading a graphic novel in the break room, and I was like, oh, you like graphic novels? That's cool. You like podcasts? That's cool. You know, like you like, like you do with people. What was the graphic novel? I don't remember what the graphic novel was. Also, I buy graphic novels for the library, yeah, so cool. it was one of my things that I do do here. Okay. I was like, yeah, I do like podcasts, and then he was like, well, have you thought about making one before? And I was like, yeah, technically, yeah. What do you have in mind? Um and then he was saying stuff about, well, you know, rural libraries, I feel like we don't hear from rural libraries a lot. So I think it might be fun to do something like that. Mm -hmm. But then we didn't talk about it again for like a year. Yeah. And then and we got then... A, we got a we <laughs> so there's a radio station here in town. The Sun Prairie Media Center is actually part of our building. A gentleman in town was doing a library radio show. He wasn't what entails a library radio show? Well, I'm not sure. I never listened to it. Oh, Shauna? Okay. Well, well, the, the library radio show that was going on was something like, what's happening at the library? Yeah. Okay. So it was more like a public announcement sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and he likes to be on the radio and do a lot of stuff for our library, but mm -hmm. he just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And so they approached our director was like, "Would you, I thought you might like to do this, and you might be good at it. And we were like, oh, well, we'd actually talked about doing a podcast before, but yeah. they're like, well, can you like do that next week though because he doesn't want to he doesn't want to do it he's like stopping and so then we had to kind of scramble together to, to decide what to do yeah. which was yeah. to just be like oh, well i guess we'll just go live on the radio and um throw around the ideas that we you know tried to put together i did create the theme song or like the opening thing first before we even started the show 
I mean, in preparation for it. So we had like one piece of, one piece of, of the show, the show. And, and the name, and then that, that was it. And then we just <laughs> there, <laughs> done. Yeah, basically, and that's really all there is to it. I mean, so then we get we had like a radio station to use, which was cool. Were you familiar with the, the equipment, or how did you? A little bit. I mean, I I went to school at UW Oshkosh for my undergrad, and I had a radio show on oh, okay. ninety point three. WRST. I'm also a, a musician. I've been recording for years with like digital multi-track stuff, so I know how to use all that stuff. I was pretty pretty familiar with it. I was thinking it could be a, a neat outreach tool, talking to people that we don't normally get to talk to, or just hearing voices. You know, like why do you like the library? It uh, felt like a, a neat way to connect with people, mm-hmm. and so that's why we started off doing that because it felt like a fun element and it made sense. But then it was too hard. It realized we realized, you know, again, this is so like just figuring it out as you go sort of thing. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, well, we actually have, are having a hard time with this 30-minute time slot because we're restricted to that because of it being a radio show. Taking us a really long time to edit everything down, that, that was the biggest issue initially. Hmm. I think it was like hours and hours editing interviews. The podcast isn't just, it's not just like what we do. You know, yeah. like we're both busy doing other things the entire yeah. week. And for us to have this ready every month, it just was taking too long. Well, we were trying to figure out the focus, right, as we went. And so it was like we were trying to do two things at once. Mm-hmm. We were trying to be like, oh, let's do outreach and talk to humans out in the world um, and talk to them about the library, but also have a topic that we cover, you know, that has to do with libraries. Mm-hmm. And so trying to have both happen at once was a little too difficult. And so, you know, we decided we had to scratch that. I only have my image of libraries growing up, which is odd because I used to think that's where they filmed Sesame Street. I don't know why. Um, that When I was a kid, I went to the library, and when we went there, we went to the one downtown. I was watching Sesame Street as a kid, and I'm like, this looks like where they do that. This must be New York. That's what it was like for me. What is some of the other stuff that you guys do outside of work here? I guess I'm primarily a writer of various things poetry, short stories, music. I've been doing music for like 20 years and, and performing out and like writing, recording my own stuff. Currently, I'm working with the Arts and Lit Lab on their literary curatorial team. So we're putting together reading series and stuff for next year. A poet friend of mine knows uh, Rita May, who's the literary arts person at Arts and Lit Lab. He gave her a um, typewriter and he gave it to me to give to her. She came here to pick it up. And then I was like, oh, you're Rita Mae Reese. And I, I had, because I had contacted her two years previous when I was working on a zine about like arts in small towns. And I had heard an interview with her on a podcast from, uh, what was that? L- Library is Incubator. So they had done an interview with her where she talk, had talked about zines and, and liking those. And so I just contacted her out of the blue and I was like, hey, want to submit a poem. So that's been cool to, to work with art in the in Lit Lab like that. I'm an organizer at LGBT Books to Prisoners. So a lot of my free time, I do work with that group. I also really love zines, and I basically don't make them and collect all these things, w- which will be zines. So like okay. I have got like so many things like just sitting in piles digitally or physically. Mm-hmm. And so it's this uh, weird insecurity I have where I just like really like to make things and I make things a lot, but then I just don't maybe make certain things. I'm just nervous about making for some reason. So, oh, I don't know. It's just a weird. Have you seen some of them? They're really kind of thrown together. I know. I know. It's so weird. I mean, I'm working on that. (laughs) I I don't know. I, I, I collect a lot of things. And so, I mean, I'm working on actually trying to make them. With my free time, I end up just like collecting a lot of things and a lot of information so like right now i have one that i'm working on about birth control for example okay. and i got like some voices from all over the u.s uh, which was surprising just Ooh. like a call out like hey who's interested and then i got a lot of responses so how did of, you put the call out out there just facebook and then yeah. and asking friends if they wanted to ask friends and then all of a sudden i was getting stuff from all over okay. so it was motivating so that's why i feel like that will actually happen. I mean, also, too, I've had this weird fascination with audio for a long time, mm-hmm. which is why podcasts made sense. I mentioned collecting things. Like, I've been collecting, like, voices 
of like friends and family for a long time. I don't always know what I'm going to do with things. Sometimes I just share them, but other times I edit them and it's a little confusing and I don't know why, but it's just a, a fascination I have. What kind of information or exposure for the library are you trying to show people or uh, explain to people? In this day and age, everyone's doing Facebook. People that live in Sun Prairie who are like, you know, in their 30s and 40s and have kids and use Facebook a lot. And are you saying just as a user or are you saying as an actual business slash advertising platform? We've got the library page and we pay to do stuff every once in a while. We'll okay. pay, pay to promote things. Because a lot of people, they won't do that. And so it's interesting uh, to hear who uses it and who doesn't. No, I don't know if we have a budget for it or not. I mean, we have, we have a budget. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to pay something. <laughs> yeah. At my old job, I learned that if you do promote something on Facebook, like you pay the, you know, 15, 20 bucks to promote it, mm. it reaches all these, you know, thousands of people, supposedly, you end up getting all these likes, and then still you only get nine people that show up to the program, and it's the same nine people that you had last month. Uh, how is the difference between that and also promoting the podcast? Because it's through the library, but it's also kind of its own separate entity in the sense that it's a podcast. Not all the people in the library are going to be like, oh, podcast, great, we'll all listen to it. Steve and I talked about this week, like the whole word of mouth thing. I focus on outreach a lot, even though I don't, I'm not given a ton of time to do it. But like that can literally mean me just like getting out of my car and going and saying hello to somebody i mean so like i end up just talking to people about podcasts or about libraries wherever i go you know because of it being like a, a thing that is a passion of mine yeah. so you mean i mean it could be like at an event that i'm at for fun oh, it could be um on my lunch break um at a coffee shop uh, being at the service desk that I'm at, that ends up happening because oh, yeah. people talk to me about media. Well, that's true. People come up to you. Yeah. And so then we'll just get to talking about something. Yeah. So, I mean, I do believe in the whole just like talking about things. That's one of the weird things about Sun Prairie. It's so decentralized. Like, I, f I feel like there's no, like, if, if there's any one place where you can get like a bunch of people staring at something, it would probably be like the school. And then second... I'm hoping might be the library. I was really surprised when I first came here that the library doesn't doesn't do like flyers and posters like everywhere in town. We're just like, no, we just advertise basically here in the library and then people just come to things. Yeah, but like what what happens too is if you think about like how the word is spread about things, when it comes to like our podcast, for example, it's been interesting seeing like how it's being used. So like for example, like all of a sudden I realized that there were a lot of library professionals listening to it. And then all of a sudden, I'd have somebody being like, oh, my staff like listened to that episode about like inclusive services. Or I had a former professor of mine who I learned was sharing it with his students at the local library school. Mm -hmm. And so like I recently went there, for example, and I talked to some students about podcasting. Mm -hmm. Or like Steve and I yesterday, the day before, we spoke to um, a new breaker space that's about they're doing podcasting at the University of Minnesota. But it's just fascinating that it's, it's gone to all these places, but we didn't mean for it to. That was definitely something like when we first started doing it, we're like, okay, so we're going to have these interviews with people in town, and that's what, you know, where it's going to bring people to it from the community. we we'll maybe talk about some of the things we have in the library, and then we'll do like just a general theme. We'll touch on a library trend or something. And so we thought it would be more like a general audience show, but we're definitely finding that it's more, I mean, it is library centric, and people who work in libraries are probably our main audience at this point, which is great. I mean, that's one of the things that I was thinking of when I originally approached Shauna about it because rural libraries especially, um, it's very isolating to, to work there because oftentimes it's one full-time person doing everything and the next closest library might be 15, 20 miles away and that's got one person in it doing everything. You don't ever have time to get together and talk about things. So I thought, well, I mean, this might be a cool way to get the word out about what different people are doing in different places around the state. It can also be like a fun, sneaky way of, of letting people know what libraries are doing. You yeah. know, so it's like, oh, let's do an episode about zines or graphic novels. So then people who are interested in that subject might be listening and be like, oh, and then libraries. <laughs> <laughs> there are budget constraints in libraries yeah. <laughs> because of money, and we need more staff usually, yeah. okay. like outreach and marketing. Okay. We don't have someone who's devoted, their job is devoted to that. You know, like I would love to do that, but I have all these other things I'm supposed to do, right. and a lot of libraries struggle with that. And so we just kind of have to throw what you can together and figure it out. Li libraries aren't just about 
numbers, right? Like, mm-hmm. a lot of it, unfortunately, has to do with numbers, like how many people come through our doors. But, like, what we do is so much more than numbers and trying to capture that, like, stories, just the way that, like, podcasts try to capture stories. Like, if we were able to quantify all these things that are qualitative, I mean, imagine, like, what that would equal. So, like, if we were able to, like, we work in the library every day and we talk to people all the time who are, like, getting a job thanks to, like, our services Mm -hmm. or who are um, finding information they need in order to get, like, better like affordable legal help uh, on something I see mean, already you're bringing up stuff that i never associate with libraries like we were talking about before yeah so imagine if all these stories for example that steve and i or other people here like somehow equaled a number or, m- or money or something yeah. like that's the weirdest part about libraries and telling our story is that like we do try to collect those stories but mm-hmm. then like what do we do with that so that we can share like how amazing and the possibilities are endless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, just sitting here and saying that just doesn't usually like move people. It's a really unusual institution, right? Because we're we're funded by the local the, by municipal taxes, by county taxes. So like where is our funding coming from and then and then who are we as librarians? Like we're not teachers, we're not social workers, we're not like all these different professions, like things that we have to learn to do every day or every week, you know, dealing with the public our building is completely open and accessible or should be to literally everyone in the community. Like we can't just kick people out. Everyone, everyone is welcome. So we're in like this nebulous space, you know, and like, what do we do with that? And how has that changed? Like books is what people think, Um, but it's changed so much. And it's been, you know, 20, 30 years of, of change driven by technology, driven by all these different social and economic trends. It's a, it's a lot bigger of a world than, than most people realize and that we can really capture. Like, that's why, like, all this is not going to make people all of a sudden sit up and be like, that's right, we should fund our library more, and they need to have this staff member and, you know, this, like, different hours and a different space yeah. that is more suited to their community. It's, it's hard to do. If my job was, like, marketing and outreach librarian, I would totally try and do a podcast that was devoted to capturing stories of people experience at the library mm. and why they like it here and what they get out of it. I mean, just because I have a range of emotions and, and things that fly at me all the time. Yeah. And if I could capture that and share that with like local uh, government <laughs> or whoever, you know, just because it's fun and interesting to, to share this stuff that does feel like a bit of a, a world that lots of people don't know about because they do have these memories of being in a library and, and maybe they just don't. They don't know. So it'd be really fun to be able to share that more. I want to be able to go to like conferences as a podcast team with a microphone set up and be like, let's come over and talk about your library world. And just to like, again, open it up to conversation that involves a lot more people. But I mean, for now, we're scrambling like, okay, what's what's next month's episode going to be about? Okay, this and this. Okay, so we got to get these interviews. Okay, Shauna, you contact me. I'll contact this person. I'll just I'll do some research. We'll write some things down. Oh, shoot, that person can't talk to me until like next week. Okay, oh, yeah. well, we got to have this done. <laughs> oh, we got to we got to reserve the, the radio station room. Oh, but they don't have any they don't have any space available. So I mean, as far as like publicity for this for the show specifically, it's sort of like organic at this point. I think that we're just more trying to figure out what we're doing next all the time it's really fast so i think that if we maybe get that more i don't don't know how yet then 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 we would um maybe focus a bit more on sharing but for now it's kind of just like let's create something and let's make something and Mm -hmm. then see where it takes us for people to know that to think about the library as a building mm-hmm. and as a space mm-hmm. and so in, what sense? in the sense that we've got porches here we've mm-hmm. got a like reading room with a fireplace oh. we've got discussion rooms we've got um outdoor space we've got space and so like what would you want to do with that space you know, because um, it doesn't mean that we can do everything because we certainly don't even have like <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even though, you know, we find grants and stuff like that. But it's just like it's really interesting that you can actually come together as a community and do something that maybe had never been done before. Mm-hmm. Thanks to the space that we have here. 
And so I love when people, that's my, those are my, some of my favorite library stories. If it's not the library going out to some space and doing it somewhere else, it's what's happening in the space. Like programs that can happen here, events that can happen here, mm -hmm. that people might not be thinking about that you can utilize with, when you're just like maybe dreaming something up at home. And you're like, where can I do this? Yeah. You could probably maybe, maybe do it at the library, which people forget about. A lot of what I do is I make connections with people. Mm -hmm. And so like... Bringing people in to be able to do, have them do what they want to do. We could do like an open mic here. We could do a lot of. I like that. We can do a lot of things. I, I just like to have people know that that's a possibility. Like we have the space. We do have a new website. It's in beta right now. It'll probably be debuting in January, and so we'll have a lot more. We'll have better stuff on it, hmm. so that you can you can access the things, get better access to the things that Shauna was talking about, like easier ways to contact us, easier ways to see like what rooms are available and and checking things out and stuff like that. If you'd like to check out their podcast, you can visit their website, tallestbuildingintown.com. And don't forget to visit my website, americanbandito.com, where you can subscribe to the show, check out my daily comic and all kinds of stuff. The music for this show is by my band, Lorenzo's Music. You can find our music online on most streaming services. Or you can visit the website at lorenzosmusic.com. Next time on the show, I talk to two guys that have done video work most of their lives and decided to start their own business. So until next time, so long. <laughs>